This is uh, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and then 5 through 7, written, I think, about 600 years before the birth of Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For every boot of the trampling, tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. Why is that? For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. So that's a different kind of government. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. So if you were to think about your life and you were to ask yourself, is there a place in, in my world where, where peace doesn't reign? Maybe love, peace, joy, hope doesn't reign. And maybe you're hopeless that it ever would reign. Um, well, you need to know that of the increase of his government, there's no end. So his government does not come to an end at the edge of, of hell. Uh, but of the increase of the government, there's no end. And so this morning, maybe as we worship, this is kind of a special worship service. This is our sort of Christmas uh, contemplative service. You can bring all of you, every, every piece of you where you think maybe there's no hope, or people in your life where you think there's no hope, or habits in your life where you think there's no hope, and just bring them to the edge of the manger and contemplate the one in the manger who governs in a very different way than uh, the governments of this world. So that's called worship. So if you would, uh, stand up, and uh, if, you, if you can't stand, that's fine. But the first song we're singing is really a call to worship. So if you think the person next to you isn't worshiping, well, you should just judge them, turn around and sing this in their face. Or, no, don't judge them. But, but you can't sing this to them. Uh, come, let us adore him. That's why we're here.
can you guys tell me what joy is? Can anybody tell me um, after a story what joy is? Yes. Joy is happiness. Mm -hmm. And in the story, Mary had joy when Jesus came. Mm -hmm. Joy is being able to, be, joy is like the popcorn that you eat. Mm -hmm. Kaya, what do you think joy is? <laughs> what makes you happy? Is joy being happy, do you think? Or is it more than that? More. More. Ooh, tell me more. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> do you, it's kind of hard to describe a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think? Sadness is kind of easy to describe. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're sad and you're crying. Feeling blue. <laughs> Feeling blue is sadness. Like, like in, um, and feeling like, and feeling like a sad. But that's like not joy. Home. Wait, what are you gonna say, Lizzie, about sadness? I was really interested. Uh, like a sad cloud. Like a sad cloud. Like Does sadness sad kind of make you feel sleepy a little bit, or like? Yeah. So yeah. joy instead of sadness. What's the difference? And you're how happy, you feel. You're not happy. That's the difference. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Love it. Maybe Thank you, guys. All right, so today we light the third candle, which represents joy. Our reading comes from Luke 2, 11 to 15. For unto you is born... This day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory t to God in the highest, and, er and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Um, for our Sela service this morning, we'll have four meditations um, based loosely on the themes of Advent of love, joy, peace, and hope. So there will be a few, few scripture readings and a few responses and also some time for reflection. So there will there'll be four of these. We are not going to list all of the scripture readings on the screen. So I invite you to close your eyes and listen, but if you're one who likes to read along and follow, li listen for the scripture reference and grab a pew Bible or pull up a Bible on your phone if you want to read along with those. So, um, so yes, please uh, pray with me. So Lord, we, we receive your welcome into your space as we welcome you into ours. As we pray, um, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we, we are your temple, the place where heaven and earth become one. 
So help us to become aware of your presence this morning, both in us and between us, around us, before us and behind us. Lord, let your love flow through us. Bind us together in your love. Bind us to you. Bind us to one another. Bring healing and wholeness to all that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. All shall be well. All shall be well. All manner of things shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and 9 through 14. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, He gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Reflect on a time when you saw his light. What was the countenance of the Lord's face upon you? When you felt his warmth touching your heart, his wisdom touching your mind, his life touching your life. Please respond with me. O Christ, living word, son of God and son of man, firstborn of all creation, be born in us according to the Father's will that we too shall become children of God. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 14. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love God does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he's given us his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. 
I invite you to reflect on a time that was a particularly hard trial or dark and God's love came to you in a very special way. What was that texture of God's love, of his presence, of his face upon you? How did his voice come to you? Was it an impression or words spoken from someone or a thought heard in your head? Passage of scripture that came alive. How did the Lord strengthen and encourage you? How has love made you new? Please respond with me. Father, you deliver us from darkness and make all things new in the kingdom of the Son of your love. Emmanuel, God with us, you fill us with your spirit, transforming all creation, making heaven and earth one in the glory of your loving presence.
Our next meditation is on joy. And joy is a natural response of setting our minds and our hearts on him. A reading from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. So, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but rather emptied himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Mm. So as we reflect on that, the feeding trough is not empty, but has been filled with light. And the tomb that held the body has been filled with light and life in the resurrection. So too, in our desire for joy, it is not a thing that we grasp. It's not a thing that we can pull into ourselves, but rather that we release and invite God, invite his presence into all the empty places. And he fills them with his presence. And the response is joy. Please uh, respond with me. All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapters 15, verse 8 through 13. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. So if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Pause and reflect on the love of the, and joy of the Lord in giving himself to us, in this invitation to us to follow him in this, to give ourselves and let that be her joy. Let's respond together. O oh Christ, living word, Son of God and Son of Man, firstborn of all creation, be born in us according to the Father's will, 
that we too shall become children of God. I invite you to go ahead and stand and join for the song. Not, oh, we're, we're not ready quite yet. Right, yeah, mind. yeah. <laughs> so I'd like to take us, put us, uh, do an exercise of gratitude. Um, think of something in particular that you're, that elicits gratitude in you, that you genuinely enjoyed um, and experienced the Lord giving himself in it some way, a participation in what he was doing, and he invited you in and you participated. It might have been something small, a kind word spoken, a smile given, an embrace or a handshake. Uh, might have been an act of service. It might have been a time of worship or a time of intercession or a time of quiet reflection, uh, sharing a sunset or a walk or a sunrise, walking the dog, uh, the hug of a child. Just experience that moment again. Feel and sink into it. Where was God in it? How was God in it? How did you share that moment together? Whether you were aware you were sharing it or not, how did the Lord share it with you? Thank God for his presence there. And as you thank him, what is his response? Please respond together. Father, you deliver us from darkness and make all things new in the kingdom of the Son of your love. Emmanuel, God with us. You fill us with your spirit, transforming all creation, making heaven and earth one in the glory of your loving presence. If you're able to, please stand.
You may be seated. Our third meditation is peace. The Lord will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. A reading from the letter to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 13 through 20. He, the Father, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Take a moment and reflect how Jesus goes before us in all things. He gives everything its place as it revolves around his goodness and light and wisdom. His life poured out, his blood, his spirit flowing through us, between us, that everything finds its place in the great dance. Everything finds its home. Everything finds its welcome. Everything hears its name. Every purpose is given. Every atom, every breath, every moment is filled with meaning and purpose in the presence of God. Please respond with All shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 25 through 27. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Take a moment, gently breathe in the name Jesus, and breathe out his name. Each breath we breathe with him. Each mention of his name turns our hearts and our minds to him. As you breathe in deeply down into your belly, imagine the Lord filling you with his breath, his spirit, his peace. Please respond with me. 
O Christ, living Word, Son of God and Son of Man, firstborn of all creation, be born in us according to the Father's will, that we too shall become children of God. A reading from Romans, chapter 8, verses 14 through 17. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. I'd like you to imagine the Father's hands holding not only the universe, in this planet, but every care that you have, everything that you love and desire to be well and be blessed. And as they come to mind, place them in his hands. He is ever ready to receive our cares and our petitions, our worries, our worship, our faith, our lack of faith, our children, our children's children, our health, our finances, our friendships, our family gatherings, those from whom we're estranged, and those to whom we are tightly knit together. We place them in his hands. Please respond with me. Father, you deliver us from darkness and make all things new in the kingdom of the Son of your love. Emmanuel, God with us, you fill us with your Spirit transforming all creation, making heaven and earth one in the glory of your loving presence. Please stand and sing. Little town Silent star.
seated. So we move to our fourth meditation. Is hope. Hope coming into a dark world. Um, Hope is born and it is birthed. It doesn't come uh, fully realized, but it struggles in the darkness. And the darkness is stretched, making space, a larger space, uh, for a hope larger than we ever imagined. But it comes with pain. Um, it comes with a mother who has to carry and bear a child. Uh, it comes with a cross that has to be borne. And it doesn't just come to others to bear the child and others to bear the cross. But the call of God is ever to follow me that I might be the firstborn of all things, that I might be born in you. So we don't just look to Mary. We, are, we join her in that sense, in bearing the Christ child. The Lord doesn't just bear the cross so we don't have to, but he comes into our sufferings and he says, take up your cross and follow me. He doesn't deliver us from suffering. He delivers us by his presence with us through it. And that is the invitation of hope that we're not in this alone. It is not futile. It is birthing something grand and beautiful that is the hope of all creation, the hope of every human heart. A reading from the Gospel of Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have been found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore the Son to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who uh, who was called barren. For nothing is impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it, be, uh, to, uh, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Let it be to me according to your word. What has the Lord spoken to you that he desires to be birthed in you? And you have no idea how that will come about. Can you let go of figuring it out and just say, let it be according to your word, Lord. Please respond with me. All shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. For there is a force of love moving through the universe that holds us fast and will never let us go. A reading from the letter to the I'm sorry, a reading from the letter to the Romans 8:18 8, through 24a. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the Son of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of whom of him who subjected it 
in hope that the creation itself will be set free from the bondage of corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the, who have the first fr fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption of sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. I'd like you to reflect. Imagine all of creation waiting for the revealing of the children of God. For its futility, its birth pangs to be fulfilled as the old creation becomes the new creation where heaven and earth become one. And you have a vital role in this. Being transformed into the image of Christ. Following him and his sufferings, even unto death, and rising with him. God became man so that man could be joined fully to God. For this all creation waits and suffers with us. There is a vital role we have to play in being the temple, the new Jerusalem, the body of Christ, that everything that we touch would experience the touch of God, for he is in us and with us. Please respond with me. O Christ, living word, son of God and son of man, firstborn of all creation, be born in us according to the Father's will, that we too shall become the children of God. And I'd like, I'd like us to offer up, uh, as Mary offered up her womb, her reputation, as Joseph offered up his plans, his hopes, his reputation, to bear Jesus into this world as the uh, as the sheep and goats offered up uh, and the cattle offered up their feeding trough to hold the baby uh, to be to be renewed uh, with life from heaven as the cross was offered up as Jesus comes into our death, our suffering, our alienation, our blindness to God. As he enters into our death and he fills it with his life and his resurrection. So too, all the things that comprise your life, I'd like to take this time um, for your cares, for the talents he's entrusted you with, for the seeds that he has planted in your heart and in your mind, the works of your hand, your finances, the raising of your children, the health of your family, your health, the things uh, that your mind dwells upon, the words that come from your lips, arising from your heart, the nurturing of your heart to dwell on the things of God, of his goodness and his love. Offer these to God. Say, Lord, fill them. As an empty vessel, fill them with your presence and your light. And Lord, as you fill them, I want to take them up with you and go out into the world and manifest your presence. I want you to renew them, Lord, and make them more than just things, the strength of, the strength of uh, 
my talents and gifts and thoughts, the strength of my work, the strength of my bank account. And I want you to do something really extraordinary with them, Lord. I want you to breathe your spirit into them and make them part of new creation. So as, um, as we do that, I, I welcome you to pray over your, your giving here at this church, whether it's in the baskets in the back or online. Say, Lord, breathe. Breathe life into this. Let it be more than just the spending of money and paying of utilities and, and salaries and giving. Uh, let it be a manifestation of your work, uh, a manifestation of gratitude, of joining in what you're doing. Lord, as I go to work in the morning, may it be an invitation to work alongside you and with you and in you, and you working in, with, and through me. As I am with my family, may this be an expression, Lord, of your, your love that you have, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that within the family we would speak words of love, affirmation, kindness, tenderness, meaning and purpose and a true identity to see one another for who we truly are and build that up with words spoken from your heart through ours to those whom we love. Please respond with me. Father, you deliver us from darkness and make all things new in the kingdom of the Son of your love. Emmanuel, God with us, fill us with your Spirit, transforming all creation, making heaven and earth one in the glory of your loving presence. And it was at the table, it was at the cradle, it was in the womb, it was in the cross, it was in the grave, it was in rising from the grave. In his entire life of incarnation, in his death and resurrection and ascension, Jesus is making all things one. He enters into our darkness, and even, even at the table he's seated at, he took bread and broke it with his disciples, including one who would betray him, knowing he would be betrayed. He still offers communion, for he is our hope. He is our faith when we are hopeless and we are faithless, his hope. His faith is birthed in us, and he redeems us. This is my body. Take and eat all of it. Take him in. He also took the cup and gave thanks. This is the blood my blood spilled out for you. The blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink you all of it. So Lord, we drink from the cup you've prepared for us in times of blessing, in times of suffering. They are all pangs of childbirth, Lord, for your doing a new work in us for which all creation groans and we groan as in pains of childbirth. Come Lord Jesus, fill us, make us new for we are a new creation in you. Son of God and Son of Man made one. The Lord comes to fill you that he might be the firstborn of many brothers. sisters, children of God. Come, the 
Brown cups are wine, the blue cups are juice. Take a piece of bread and dip it. And as you eat the bread and ingest the wine, in your heart by faith, eat of Christ, the living bread come down from heaven, and let his life fill you with his presence, with his spirit. Oh, you are Christmas. Let him be born in you every moment of every breath. Amen.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you feel the countenance of his love. For he is for you. He is for you. He is for you. Jesus became man. He came from God and became man. Emptied himself, even unto death. And he rises and returns to the Father. And he doesn't return alone. He's taking all of us, all of creation with him. May Christ be born in you, evermore expanding the increase of his kingdom and his presence with you, in you, and through you. Amen.